to our continual reverence to the word. We are going to go to the book of Jeremiah. We won't go deep into it. We'll go to just the first chapter. So when you get to Jeremiah 1, verse 4, it says, still says. I know my electronic folks are already here. Jeremiah 1, we're going to start at verse 4. When you get it, say, still saved. All right, I need some more still saved. Jeremiah 1. Now, if you're in the New Testament, you went too fast. You got to turn around and go back. Jeremiah 1, verse 4. When you get it, say, still saved. Almost. The brother from Texas says almost. Amen. East Texas, I'm sorry. East Texas. Jeremiah 1, verse 4. Still saved? All right. Look, I'm going to read and then you'll follow with me. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, now hear this. I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put words in your mouth. See, today, see, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow to build and to plant. Amen. What a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his most holy word. Let me just read from the New Living Translation to kind of give you a little bit more insight. It said, the Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nation. Oh, Sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. The Lord replied, don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Amen. What a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of this most holy, holy word. Amen. Look, our sermonic thing today is embracing purpose. Embracing purpose. Let me, let me give you just a couple of notes here on what would happen to me when I became pastor of this church. And I would go and visit our sick and shut in. So when I would go into the room, I would tell them, hello, I'm the pastor at Peoples. Almost consistently, they would say, oh, we were looking for somebody older. All right, all right. Uh, Y'all still looking for somebody older. <laughs> but it had been ingrained in us as a society, whether it be young, old, we have a perception of what we feel will be success or who should be able to fill positions. Right, right. And so that comes at the behest of our society, 
of the things that we are bombarded with. Somebody is not old enough. Somebody is too old. Somebody is not young enough. I still don't know what young enough is. But for my kids, I seem to be getting too old. So, so, so it, it, it operates in the perception. And what can happen is that some, what we perceive, right, can then cause us to be insecure about taking on responsibilities and moving within purpose. Right. Now, it's true now, there has always been a concern for who or what we are in life. What was I created for? What was I born for? And am I equipped to live and carry out that purpose? Now, such go the trial and tribulations of life as we seek to be pleasing to the God that created us. For part now of being a Christian is one accepting, one that we have one creator. But as in this scripture indicates that we were created for a purpose. Right, right. We are a dynamic part of the creation of the earth and the fullness thereof, but we have a strong place and strong responsibility within this creation. Right, right, right. And even as we look, I, I, I marvel, I look, I cannot begin to conceive what it feels like to be on the verge of playing in this Super Bowl. I cannot. I cannot conceive of an eighth grade basketball championship or any such thing, right? It is the reflection, though, of these uh, 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 athletes that are created for these moments in time. It's their ability to, against all the competition that they have faced in their lives, to still be standing, the greatness in their running or strengthening, and the others that, that along the way could not adhere to. They either didn't have the natural abilities or they didn't have the discipline by which to create or to move to the different and to the next level, right? But, but it's the understanding that, that, that we are created for certain moments, right? And that, and, and, and that to be created for the moment is not to forget who created the moment. And then not create, not forget who put us in the moment at the time, right? And, and what we see is, is a life full of persons that had the greatest of opportunities, but did not move upon those opportunities. There are countless persons that we can know from our cities or from our families of persons who had the potential, but didn't have the discipline or they find a way to talk themselves out of the purpose or out of the responsibility. We've seen it, whether they have been the greatest of singers, and you know those who we saw growing up who yet fell by the wayside, or the greatest of musicians, or the greatest of financial minds uh, uh, and, and, and of organizational skills that may have used them instead of for the purpose of good, but then use them for the purpose of bad. The, 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 the brilliance that we see of our, uh, of our young men and women in prisons, persons whom are now locked down, but, but, but could have been that much better in society, perhaps if they made different decisions or chose different associations. We are all a product of our choices, right? A lot of things we can't blame God for because God gave us the opportunity of choice. But we chose to go outside 
of those things that and those things that we should have been involved with took it upon ourselves. And, and where, look, 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 there was there was voice, there were voices saying, my sister, my brother, you don't want to get in a relationship with this brother. And you show my sister, you don't want to get in a relationship with this sister. But we take it upon ourselves to be able to make the call. And then what happens is that our purpose and our, our life is hijacked by the bad choices that we make. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And, and so then we look back and we said, gosh, we lost a lot of time because we was focused on the wrong things with the wrong people when we know that there were better things for us. So, so the challenge for us, church, in our lives is this. When we get the opportunity, embrace it. Don't seek an opportunity to run from it or find excuses to abandon it. So, so we are saints now. We got, we got a responsibility here now. Now, can we rise to the opportunity and to the circumstances and then embrace it? Or do we see the challenge that can come from it and then we run from it? Amen. I always, I always talk about this. If a deacon knew everything a deacon was going to get into, they might have said no. Amen. Amen. Or they embraced the opportunity. If the preacher knew, or the pastor knew, right? If God, if God say, look here, this is what's going to happen. Oh boy, I tell you what. Amen. Right, right. But, but, but again, if we embrace purpose, we embrace the good and the bad. That's why, that's why, look, that's why we like the marriage vows, right? For better or for worse. Right? Through sickness, through health. Till what? Death do us part. Right? That's a heavy standard for us to be able to be responsible for. So, we see in our society these opportunities that people have to rise to the, you know, to the opportunity. Just, just seeing stories, young mothers giving birth and then finding a way to abandon the child simply because of being, feeling ill-equipped to be a mother. Or the father hearing of the birth of his child, then running at the sign of the challenge and the opportunity to be a father. Right? Look, I'm on, I'll share, I'll share that. I, I, I never can remember all what I share with you, so I'll just go ahead and do it. Amen? Uh, but I'm sure you'll come to me and let me know you told me that before. Amen? Look, look, when, uh, when my wife, uh, uh, and when we were notified, notified, she told me she's pregnant. Amen. After we were married. Amen. All right. Don't start, don't, don't start letting your mind wander. Right? This was after we was married. Amen. Right, right. Now, now, you know, when we saw that first ultrasound, you know, of my son, there was something that hit. I mean, I was happy, but there was, I was like, man, I need like ten million dollars right now. <laughs> Amen. It was the fear. It was it was the fear at that moment that oh wow, I'm gonna be a father. So it's the responsibility. Right? May not have seen everything that could have happened or what could have known, but you can you can push yourself out of the opportunity of the challenge by finding excuses on why you're not perfect for it. Amen. You will always find a way to find something about you that's not good. Some of a lot of times we're our worst critics. We don't need other, like other people criticize us. We do a good job ourselves. Amen? We can host whole seminars on how messed up we are. Amen? And they'll last all day. You won't even get to yours because I'll be stuck on mine the whole time. Right? Okay. But, but we have to be careful. Now, even, even at the thought of me being a father, that we, I don't psych myself out. Now, it'll be okay. Because I was given this moment and this opportunity and have to rise to it and not run from it. Right? All right, all right. Now, now, this scripture here, church, gives us insight into one of the great prophets here, Jeremiah. Now, 
Jeremiah, you got, I, I mean, Jeremiah 52 chapters of intense prophecy, trials, tribulation, blood, sweat, and tears. Jeremiah, gonna, I mean, Jeremiah, he going to give it to you. He going to give you his happy days. He going to give you days he upset. You know, where just he just want him and God to go off by themselves and push everybody over the cliff. Amen. Now that's Jeremiah, right? Jeremiah been crying and crying and crying. But now, keep in mind here, church, this is chapter one. His ministry started with doubt. Okay? He started with doubt. Now, before we go down the Jeremiah list, please know that he is in good company with the doubt. Right? right? Moses had doubt before he took on leading the children of Israel. Wow. He was a stubborn. Right? So, so he felt he began at that point to point out the things that he was not good at or could do. So hopefully that would take him out of this awesome responsibility. He wasn't perfect. Right? But what did God do? God provided a mouthpiece for him in his own brother. Abraham had, he had doubt, church, remember, because of his age, right? And the societal expectations and norms, it was the belief that he could not have a child. Right? Right? So it led him into this mess with Hagar and the whole family, all of these issues, right? Gideon had doubt. Look, even Jesus now, let this cup pass before me. He brings it back real quick to say, not my will, but what? Thine will. Right, right. But we see that the flesh has a tendency to try to push us out of great things and great responsibilities simply because we believe we're not good enough. Right? Simply because we believe that. So Jeremiah, he's in good company here. Because he represents what could be the worst of us when we feel like we're not equipped for the moment. Right? But God gives Jeremiah insight, but it is up to him uh, whether he takes heed to him. Let's go to, let's go to verse 4. Still say it? All right. The Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Okay? Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Right, right. Now, now here, right here now, that's the comfort for my young brother here. Right? Are we equipped? Yes. Because I knew you before you got here. Right, right. So, 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 so our belief here is this, church, that, that while in the womb, God touched us and gave us and put within us the, the skills and the, the, you know, and the fortitude to rise up to purpose when it's time for us to rise up to it. Keep in mind now, when Christ started ministry, he was ready. He was ready. Had Christ, yes, Christ, yes, had he been circumcised, had he been taught, had he grown up uh, in the carpenter's house, had he learned, yes, he had all of that. So when it was time for him to step out, right, he was ready. But God had touched him and sent him before he even got here. Same with us here, church. Right, right. We're set apart, right? We're set apart and we are appointed, uh, 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 appointed, right? And so it's not up to us to run, but to embrace it. Right? To embrace it. Now I know, I know it's tough now. I know it's tough because sometimes too we can look at other people and what they're going through. Right? And then we can say, no, that's not for me. Right? Okay? Right. And, 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 see, and see, we then begin to get psyched out just on the human condition. Right? <laughs> Because we'll look at other people and say, wow, they got to go. But see, you can't look at other people. Because this scripture is, is, is individual in particular. Each of us as an individual was touched by God before we got here. It's just a matter of us standing up to the touch now that we're here. Right? Now, people will go through great lengths now 
to avoid it, right? Now, 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 it, 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 it's the world that comes up with these dynamics about who's worthy and who's not. Okay, but God is starting off with his young prophet to say, look here, I knew you before. Now, we have to be careful because earthly consequences does not determine, does not define godly purpose, right? Because if God touched you before, whatever happens when you get here, his touch is still on you. You ever heard, you ever heard a preacher say, man, I was running from being a preacher? Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, but, but everywhere I run, it seemed to be a something there. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. it was touched before birth. Amen? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And I just had to stop running. You ever heard, like, uh, you know, I was, you know, deacons, you know, or, 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 or we had great just, just melodic voices and musicians running Right, from purpose. Right. But you can only run so far. Amen. Right? Amen. Because wherever you go, God will be there to meet you there. Amen. Come on, talk to me somehow. Yeah. Look, I, I just, you know, I had one of the mothers that I felt, I mean, I mean, she was like, you know, she was like a terrorist. You know what I'm saying? Like, I felt whenever I was doing something wrong, she would show up there. So it would stop me from doing it. Yeah. Amen. Even my friends on the block, they try to get me to do something. I'm like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Have anybody seen my mother? <laughs> right, right? Because she was active. She was out there, right? Right? And then it would, it, would, it, would, it would make me concerned because with my friends, they mother knew mama. Right? So, so we were all trapped on this block with everybody that talked to one another. Amen? And we actually had the audacity to think that if we went to another block and carried on, that it wouldn't get back to our block. We learned that lesson real quick. Amen? Right, 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 right. Because you can't run from it. God is like, God is that thing that will find you everywhere you go. All right, now, come on, let's go. Let's go down here. Now, now let's go. What is Jeremiah's response? I'm too young. There we go, man. There we go. Right. Alas, sovereign Lord, I do not know how to speak. That's one. Second thing is, I'm too young. Yeah. I don't know how to speak, and I'm too young. Right? Now, he done gone farther than Moses. Moses was about to speak. I don't know how to speak, and I'm too young. So the world has made Jeremiah feel insecure about himself simply because he had looked around, or we can spiritually speculate, but he had seen other examples and figured that in this example here, he was not going to make it. Right. I'm too young. Right. Now, what's God's response? The Lord replied, don't say I'm too young. For you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. Right? Now, 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 please know the emotion of the text, right? God took offense to this moment. Now, now I called you to do something, now you're trying to tell me why you can't do it. Right? That's us. That's us. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. I know, I know, look, I know. Some of y'all got my number that it come up on your phone when I call. I know you want something. Don't answer it. Like I'm outside. Don't answer it. Right? Right? It's not me calling, it's the Lord. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. Now, God takes offense to these moments of doubt and it presents obstacles strong enough to make us doubt the opportunity. How many of us know we can do, we can do a responsibility, you know, but we run from it because of self-doubt, right? Many of us outside the church, the cases, the cases that we could litigate, the books that we could write, the jobs that we could pursue, the opportunities that we could do, but we begin to psych ourselves out to, say, to find some reason that says we can't do it, yeah. right? 
If Jeremiah know anything, he know the condition of his people. Yeah. And if God is calling him as a prophet, he gonna have a rough ride in this time. Okay? God doesn't let us out. The company thing is this. He says, I'll be with you. Amen. Right. The thing is that, he look, I touched you, now look at it, I touched you before you was born. Yeah. Right? I'm now coming to you and saying this time, but I'm not going to abandon you. If I touch you, I'm going to stay with you. Yeah. Right. right? If I touch you, I'm going to be there with you. Mm -hmm. Right? Don't run from the opportunity. Yeah. Come on now, Jonah. Jonah was the classic runner. Yeah. The classic runner. Yeah. Come on. Now, 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 look at that. Jonah went out into the water. Mm -hmm. Surely God ain't going to get him there. Yeah. Right? But what? The earth is lower than the what? Fullness there. Wherever you go, I'm going to be there. And then ultimately, you got to come back to purpose. Right, right. The scripture puts the responsibility, right, back upon the Lord who called us. Because God is saying, not only did I form you, but I won't leave you. Okay? I wouldn't bring you this far to abandon you in the responsibility. Isn't that something? You must understand that God have a love relationship with his people. Come, who else can keep forgiving us as much as we mess up and still welcome us back? That's God. Who else can keep doing? Look at what he does with his children who keep abandoning him, going to other gods. Mm -mm. I'm still going to receive you back. Now, you may get punished, you may have to go things on, uh, like along the way, but I won't leave you, nor will I forsake you. That's the thing here, church. I'll be, I'll be done. I'll be done. Just, just a second here, okay? When we take communion, it is the reminder of purpose. Christ is indicating, and he is taking and showing his people, his followers, right? that you are going to have to endure. Yeah. But I want you to do this in remembrance of me. Remembering that I knew what I would have to deal with. Yeah. I knew the price that I would have to pay. Yeah. This bread is broken that will represent the body that would have to suffer, that would be bruised for our iniquity, yeah. that would be beat upon and spit upon. This body, you will recognize the blood that was shed. That blood, you will recognize. But knowing that I understood the task, but I didn't run from it. So when it said this here, church, because you got to be real. Look, when you come here and you do this in remembrance of him, you must take away from this that you do this in remembrance of the purpose and the task for which you have been called. Right, 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 right. That's what, look, that's what communion is about. It's about a lot of things. But what it is about is about a Savior who stood up and said, I know what I'm going to have to face. I know that I'm going to die, but I'll be back with you in three days. You're going to see me again. But I want you to continue to do this so even in your most frustrated place, even in your most downtrodden, in your most brokenhearted moment, in your sick moment, in your most grieved moment, still you have an opportunity to serve. Yes. And be like here at the young Jeremiah, who had excuses and God took them away. And now we got 52 full chapters of action and inspiration from this young man who didn't think he could talk or thought he was too young. And now he affect the body till eternity. Yeah. Embrace it, church. Embrace it. Don't run from it, but embrace it. Come on, let's praise God for his holy word. Come on, let's thank God.